we started to measure headphones and we found that they were uh, all over the map. I'm Nick Harcourt and we are here at NAM in the beautiful big orange JBL truck and I am here with Omid Konsaripour and Dr. Sean Olive and we're going to talk about headphones. Mm. When you say measure, what, what uh, does that mean? Measure them, put them on a uh, test fixture and measure the frequency response, measure the distortion and we also listen to them and what? Yeah. from the same company you could listen to one, wow that doesn't sound anything like so there was no consistent sound or brand, uh, sound within a brand or between brands. It was all over the map. Listening obviously is subjective, but mm -hmm. you can measure these things, as, as you said, scientifically. I mean, how, how do you go about that? What, what, if I bought you mm -hmm. a set of headphones and I wanted you to take, take a look at what they, what they were doing, what would you do? Well, there are some industry standard couplers, uh, test fixtures that uh, you can use that are developed to uh, measure the response of uh, the hearables, the uh, headphones, different types, of course, in-ear, over-ear, on-ear, um, at the eardrum reference point. So uh, basically it's like as if you ran a small uh, tube mic down your ear canal and the, your, because these are all really matters when it comes to the perception of uh, the response of a headphone that you're looking on a paper or uh, on a, you know, screen, computer screen, uh, how they translate to what um, you can make sense out of it uh, when you're uh, perceptually hearing that response off of a headphone. Um, so based on that, we can develop a target that we can say, if you design 100 different shape, different size, different models of headphones to that target, then it could be mostly preferred by most of the consumers out there. Got it. So yeah. uh, this is a scientific uh, method that we used, um, uh, you know, getting results off of uh, hundreds, two hundreds of uh, listeners, subjects, and fortunately, because Harman is a big company, we have uh, offices all around the world. Uh, we can travel around and test many people. We can look into different um, cultural. Um, preferences, uh, gender preferences, uh, age. age. What kind of differences did you find and then how do you design to uh, adapt to that for, for different people? So we did a study where we had people adjust the bass and treble. We, we gave them a reference headphone that we think sounds good but then they can adjust it. And what we found was that younger, less experienced listeners, listeners who are not trained uh, as audio critical listeners, uh, the younger they were, the more they would turn the bass and treble up. And uh, if, as they got older and more critically trained as a listener, they would turn the bass down until they hit this age of uh, around 55, and then they would turn the bass down more and start cranking the treble. And that's most likely related to the hearing loss. I was going to say, why is that? What, what, yeah. what frequency shifts are in your ears when you hit that age? So just, just, just as you age, your sensitivity to higher frequencies starts to uh, be reduced. And uh, you have trouble understanding conversations and noisy environments like this. And uh, so to increase the intelligibility of voices, they will turn the bass down because that tends to mask their voice and turn up the treble. And uh, it's, it's starting to become more like a hearing aid rather than a headphone. I was going to say pardon. <laughs> <laughs> so how is that information then, how is that research used in the development of the products that you manufacture and right, sell. Right. So we look at we look at the uh, what's the demographic for this headphone, and if it's a young listener, we'll add you know, the JBL consumer brand adds a little more bass. We do, we've sort of have this reference target, which is an average of, uh, of a lot of different ages. Uh, for young people, it'll have a little extra bass. If you're buying an AKG headphone like uh, like this one. Uh, the K371, it's kind of tuned for to be very neutral and accurate and uh, you know, if, if you're older... Is this also a headphone that you would use in a studio? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So right. that, that's one that most people consider to be very neutral, very accurate and it, uh, it's been tuned so that it satisfies roughly 64% of the population.
and as that's considered a good that's good if you yeah. can get get yeah. to that yeah. uh, that's the majority that percentage yeah. right. so we're when we're talking about the uh, our reference as a neutral neutral sound, uh, we're basically trying to not introduce coloration. Um, so if you're a recording engineer, mastering engineer, uh, and uh, you want to um, actually listen to what is coming out of a neutral loudspeaker, you basically are trying to get the same neutrality off of a pair of headphones uh, for mixing and uh, other purposes. That uh, we know that there is a circle of confusion that is uh, with a microphone in a studio that is in a room basically and uh, then that it goes to a pair of loudspeakers as a studio monitor that the mixing engineer is using to mix the content that is also um, a loudspeaker with a specific uh, response in a room uh, that has um, a unique uh, characteristic and then it is mixed uh, based on the mix and engineer or the artist's uh, taste. And then we're listening through another set of loudspeaker in a different room. So it's a circle that if we're trying to close the loop, then uh, we should probably shoot for neutrality, starting with a microphone, uh, speakers or studio monitors and headphones and everything all the way to the end. Um, the consumer uh, using the same uh, pair of uh, neutral loudspeakers in a fairly well-treated room. Then you can have a good experience of listening to something that that artist intended for you to listen to. How much time is spent in the lab, uh, in front of computers, looking at, at sound waves and developing um, the next product? I mean, from if you decide that you want to come up with something new, like these, these new AKGs we were just talking about, which again are the uh, K371. Um, when, you, when you're when you looking at creating a new product, what, what kind of uh, process is, is involved? It, it's a very complex process because sound quality is one thing, and then the ergonomics, the um, what they form look like, factor, what they feel like. They, exactly. Right. The how, way, how they fit. Yep. How they fit, the clamping force, all these really matters. I mean, they all. Uh, are hand in hand and they get together to uh, deliver a good sound quality. If you have a good sound quality that the transducer is capable uh, of making uh, and it, all the design is good except let's say the cushion that doesn't give you a good seal, then you have a base leakage. So that's going to be a negative you know, downside of that design. So these are, we try to take all that into consideration and um, basically uh, that makes an end product to be a good product uh, again our main focus is sound quality but then it goes out and the marketing uh, people they decide okay uh, the look of the headphone or the color if it's this way or that way it could you know they're targeting different audience uh, so it's a it's a very complex uh, process that um, all different divisions are working together to make a good, uh, successful product. Well, it's been great talking to you guys. I, I know that um, you're not actually allowed out of the, you know, the basement usually, right? We, we, <laughs> we got you above ground because you're busily beavering away, inventing and creating. I'm kidding, obviously. But <laughs> thanks for coming and, and talking a, a little bit about headphones from then until now and mm -hmm. tomorrow. Thank you.